Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, we want to take a minute to introduce you to Airborne Unlimited. Boeing's developmental KC-46 makes its first flight, and the EAA sweepstakes winners accept their grand prize. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Happy New Year's, everyone. Well, next Monday, Aero News and Airborne start our first steps in a complex series of initiatives that will be rolled out slowly and professionally over the coming years. You've heard bits and pieces of it here and there, but next week, Airborne comes to you daily, Monday through Friday. And with the added participation, backing, and support of over 112 aviation and aerospace associations. And by this time next year, that number is expected to be even more substantial. There are huge plans for what we now call Airborne Unlimited, with its six extensive upgrades planned for the next 18 to 24 months, dozens of new features, and even greater plans than what we've disclosed, we plan to disruptively innovate the aviation media business in ways that have never been seen before, following the kind of path we trailblazed some 20 years ago, and a path that has changed aviation media substantially ever since. The last two decades have seen us produce over 200,000 Aero news stories, 7,000 podcasts, 2,000 Aero TV programs, and nearly 400 episodes of Airborne. We're proud to have led this industry's media and education evolution, but if you think that was impressive, you really need to see what's coming next. Most of all, we want to invite you to get directly involved, and over the next coming weeks, we'll let you know how you can be a part of what we expect to be the most exciting revolution yet, and how the aviation world communicates, educates, and promotes its interest all over the world. Well, we hope we've gotten you sufficiently excited for Airborne Unlimited, but now I'll step off my soapbox and we'll get to the real news. The KC-46 Pegasus Development Program completed its first flight of the Engineering, Manufacturing, and Development Aircraft No. 1. This aircraft is a provision KM-767-2C freighter, and it's the critical building block for the KC-46 missionized aerial refueler. The 767-2C freighter is the initial step towards producing a KC-46. The first flight of a KC-46 development aircraft number two is expected in the spring of 2015. As part of a contract awarded in 2011 to develop the Air Force's next generation tanker aircraft, Boeing is building four test aircraft, two 767-2Cs, and two KC-46A tankers. The 7672Cs will be tested as commercial freighters prior to receiving their aerial refueling systems. The KC-46s will fly as fully equipped tankers through the FAA and military certification process. After the break, EAA's 2014 sweepstakes grand prize winner claims their Fairchild 24. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you love watching Airborne, we really want you to be a part of it and help us out by sending us your story suggestions to news-spy at aero-news.net. Winning the 2014 EAA Grand Prize sweepstakes was sweet, but actually accepting the prize put the icing on the cake. John and Marcia Fulton rolled into Oshkosh, eager to get their first look at and lay official claim to their new 1937 Fairchild 24H Deluxe. Not all grand prize winners keep their planes, but the Fulton say this airplane will find a place in a heated hangar located on their grass airstrip, and if you've seen the plane, you can't blame them. The Fultons have arranged for it to be ferried home by former EAA Vice President Jeff Skiles. John kept walking around the airplane, marveling at its beauty and craftsmanship, 
and especially the covering. While pointing out the meticulous work around the windows, he said, quote, whoever did this knew what he was doing, end quote. Well, it's Friday at last. That is unless you celebrated the new year in which it probably feels more like a Monday. Or maybe that's just me. Either way, it means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Today, Jim takes a look at year 2014 in aviation and offers his opinion of some of the best stories of the year, of course to be followed next week by his observance of some of the worst. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. We put 2014 in the rearview mirror, and we couldn't do it fast enough. For those of us at ANN, we have been working for several years on a new concept, something that we think is disruptively innovative, called Airborne Unlimited. We told you a little bit about it, but to be truthful, we haven't told you 90% of it. Not because we're trying to be secretive, but because it is a process that is evolving. And this is something that I want to talk about for the coming year quite a bit. This industry needs more disruptive innovation in every way. It takes evolutionary changes, many evolutionary changes, to produce revolutionary effects. That's where Airborne is headed, that's where many other companies and ideas are headed, and that's where 2015 and the world of aviation must head. But in the meantime, we saw some good things this year. We saw the restart of Mooney and some new designs to come out of there. Diesel, in fact, outstanding. Bob Hoover got some of the honors that have been denied him, and let's face it, if there is anybody that epitomizes the best of aviation, it's Bob. Uh, as many of you know, I've worked with him for years through good times and bad, and I've never met a greater gentleman, a more professional character, a better example for the whole world of aviation than Bob Hoover. We couldn't honor this man enough. Lower av gas prices are producing more flying and better flyers because more flying from these flyers produces a safer, more experienced fleet. I'm hoping we're going to see a lot of that, and I'm hoping the avgas prices stay down, period. The One Week Wonder Project at Oshkosh this year excited hundreds, even thousands of people as an airplane went together before their very eyes. It's not the first time this has been done, but for some reason this caught on in a great way. We hope we see it year after year after year, and more important, we hope that the ultimate benefit is that the hundreds and thousands of people who see this start their own airplanes. Electric aircraft development is definitely underway. We're seeing some exciting developments. This is one of those disruptively innovating technologies that can change the face of aviation, and we can't wait to see how it does so. EA's renaissance as an organization is still underway. Good leadership, good direction. Some of the things that, well, a couple of other so-called large associations really need to see, EA is doing it right now, and I couldn't be more pleased to see it happening. There are still aero dreamers out there. Alan Klapmeyer is looking for lightning to strike twice with Kestrel and so much more beyond that. Jerry Gregoire's project at Redbird, the amazing developments at Hartzell, what George Bai is doing with electric aircraft, and so many other extraordinary things. Well, as long as the dreamer lives, the dream of aviation stays alive. We saw, most of all, great efforts from people throughout the industry. And while larger organizations like EAA will get the lion's share of the attention, let's not neglect the fact that there are small to mid-level associations that do extraordinary work on tight resources and with small staffs, and in their way, change aviation for the better every day. Those are some of the things that, to me, represented the best of 2014. We'll talk about some things next week that, frankly, need some improvement, and beyond that, some of our suggestions for the next year. But in the meantime, 2015, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to make it? Join us as we try to be disruptively innovative. And Happy New Year to you all. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Looking forward to a hell of a year. After these messages, we want to introduce you to a new segment in which we will head for a news-laden trip around the patch. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Ben McSteen KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Welcome back. Well, with so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we're calling Around the Patch. Could it be 
that UAVs are donning hard hats and heading for the job. The Skycatch company says UAVs may become big players in the construction industry. They say aerial data collection and imaging could save developers billions. Cruise missiles beware, a blimp is watching you. The Raytheon company is testing a system of Army aerostats containing radar that can look down on attacking missiles, drones, or airplanes from 10,000 feet, providing early warning. SpaceX now targets January 6 as a launch date for its next supply mission to the International Space Station. This will be SpaceX's fifth cargo delivery to the space station, and it's expected to arrive on January the 8th. By Aerospace is ready to produce its Silent Falcon electric-powered UAS. Using a solar electric hybrid propulsion system, the 25-pound craft can remain aloft for 6 to 12 hours. The target market is commercial, public safety, and defense applications. An FAA facility in Penn Township, Pennsylvania, lost radar capabilities because of intruders. The four 20-year-old interlopers were taken into custody by police and then released. It appears this was a case of hijinks and not a planned attack. And lastly, a St. Petersburg, Florida developer wants a taller building. But first, FAA approval is required. This could mean changing the approach to Albert Witted Airport, which is okay with the airport manager, but the FAA still has the final say. In response to the growing need for highly skilled, well-trained test pilots and flight test engineers in the commercial, business, and general aviation sectors, the International Flight Institute, shortened to IFTI, has opened its doors in Mojave, California. With a large training staff and some 35 different types of aircrafts and helicopters at its disposal, IFTI has been created to fill the need for test pilot and engineer training, both in the United States and abroad. Course studies include a full spectrum of aerodynamic engineering academics, ranging from evaluation and definition of flying qualities to certification requirements and standards. Custom courses are also being offered, along with extended studies and practical applications in both fixed and rotary wing aircraft. When we come back, a watch company founder says the AOPA forgets women pilots. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. It appears the AOPA may have slighted their women members. The Abingdon Watch Company chides the AOPA for giving short shrift to women pilots in an article about the history of pilot watches and what is available today. Chelsea Abingdon Welch, the founder of Abingdon Company, said in her post, quote, where was any mention of women flying or watches for women pilots? Why perpetuate the stereotype that women don't fly by not including them in every corner possible? End quote. She urges her readers to write to the AOPA to remind the organization about the company and, more importantly, the great role women play in general aviation. Well, that's our first program for the year 2015. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited will now be streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale, thanks for watching, and we look forward to you joining us next week for the debut of Airborne Unlimited.